welcome to my apiary. I've changed my method on how I assemble these quite a little bit since I made that first video. So just quickly, I'm just going to run through one, maybe two, and uh, I'm going to show you the different method that I use, and it seems to just be more efficient. Get the 2x4 set up here, get our glue on. I'm using two inch screws in case anybody's wondering. I tried inch and a uh, half and they weren't long enough. They just didn't seem long enough. Flush it to the back, flush it to the side. You're gonna have it home. I'm gonna do this entire side. screw just bites into the plywood very little bit and starts the screw otherwise it'll sit there and spin for a moment and that's the point when your bit will come off of the screw Five in the middle. Ultimately four because one comes out later on. This 18 volt drill, well that's a beast and that'll break your arm if you're not careful. Okay, so now that's done however one more little thing I can do to make my job easier. I'll measure out where my center uh, center piece goes here. And then my fingers out of the book. 12 and 3 quarter. So 12 and 3 quarter and here is 15 and 3 quarter. In case you're wondering. Okay, so that's that's done on the top. Mark all my locations here without getting that squeeze out on my shirt. That's nasty stuff on your clothes. Okay. So choose a couple of nice runners out of the pile. Now what I've been doing, uh, see this 
I know that this plywood and this runner are exactly the same width. The runner is the same length as the plywood is wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush that to this side, just back from my line, just so I can see the line. Okay, and approximately in the right area there, and drill one hole. Now that'll locate my screw and I can go ahead and apply my glue. Okay, a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue. Screws. Now put this one screw in. Feel it, it located that piece exactly where I want it. Now I can see that this is sticking over here. So what's happened is either this 2x4 is, or this one, is leaning in, or the plywood is is uh, just bowed a little bit. So we'll, uh, we'll attempt to rectify that. Now here's a clamp that, it's a spreader clamp. I've turned this around so that uh, the clamp will push uh, push things away from each other instead of pull toward. And I can put it in multiple different places. I'm choosing this place right now. Just tighten it a little. No need to push it far. And now that one is perfectly in the right place as well. Those all need to be drilled. So I'll drill that one the hole and you screw in it. Okay. And now I can drill the remaining four holes. And I don't need to drill right through to the 2x4 on these holes. Okay, done with those. Grab four screws. These are really easy to overdrive, so this uh, spruce or pine, th these are spruce. It's pretty soft. Don't, uh, if you drive it through, you'll just crack it. And won't have anything. So you don't want that screw head proud. Ideally, it's perfectly flush. I can't do that, so I'll just drive it very slightly uh, recessed. Okay, I'm going to take that off now, but I'll leave it sit here, and then I turn this whole rig around. Give me four acres to turn this rig around. Okay. Rinse and repeat. So we've got another runner here, and I can feel that that is flush on each end, so I don't need spreader clamp. Glory day, no spreader clamp. But I'm still going to do this. I'm going to look at that one and then put my glue on. This is the M12 system for these uh, Milwaukee tools. Those are great little tools. The M12 tools, do not underestimate them. Uh, the M18s, holy smokes, they're great. They're really fantastic. But you pay, right? So you want great tools, you don't want to pay as much money. Get the 12s. They're not going to have as much power. 
You're not going to last as long on the battery. You can't get the big tools in the M12. Big tools like the circular saw, chainsaw, that kind of stuff. Uh, so this one's done. And normally I'll, I'll trim them over on my stack here, but you can't see that, so I'll start by trimming, of course. I don't know if I can do it this way. It's kind of kind of backwards for me. This knife is just sharp like a razor. And uh, actually, this is the front. I don't need to trim that. I do need to trim the back. And I need to trim under here. I mentioned these little squeeze outs on the bottom. Why I need to trim those so that my uh, router bit bearing doesn't run into them. There's another reason they should be trimmed because that's the, the corner edge where the the lid cleat goes. So you don't want anything encumbering that. So they would be trimmed regardless. Okay, so now at this point is when I run my chamfer on the runners. Feel that router run up on this screw here. So I'll tighten that up a little. Okay, so this is the back. Straight over. And when I put the underpinnings together and did this part, I actually did my measure and I marked out where my center pieces are to go. So that's done. That's part of my process that I've changed. Oops. That one out. Yeah, let's 
back. Both sides. Just flip them over, find if there's one side that's got some blemishes, just put that down. Side pieces for a spacer. Brush it up. Brush the center. Running into the screws a lot. Okay. Next, I'll put these side pieces on. glue on the end here. I just wipe it with my finger. Get some glue on the back one there to go between these two. So set that one there. Set this one here. Center. Just put the glue on both of them. Spread the glue on this one. I have been using plenty of glue. I could get away with less. I have a hard time putting less on. It's actually a little faster to spread the glue when there's more glue. You don't have to chase it around as much. So just use the residue from there. Put a little bit of glue on that. Now this is a change. I just tack this. No reason for a big staple here. There's going to be two giant screws in that. So just tack it. And that'll allow me then to go ahead and put this one on. Same thing. A little bit of residue from that. Put it on the end of it. And then if you know if I want to clean that brush a little I can just clean it here. Line that up with my line. so that if I forget to take that screw out and it's in the way then I can fix that problem but and that's done so that goes pretty fast so I've got all of my pallets uh, assembled they, they all need that final trim but that won't take long and uh, now I'm on to uh, moving toward the covers and uh, so, as you may recall, and again, I wish I had a finished cover here to show you, but I don't. I don't have any. I've used up all my covers last season, so they're all on beehives. <laughs> but, uh, so I run a rabbit in all of these end cleats. This is the cleat that will go uh, vertical at the end. So we've got a quarter of an inch 
uh, cut into there and three quarter inch high to match up with the plywood um, so you can see I think you can see that that's nice and flush there and then what happens there if I can do it is the uh, the top cleat then uh, will glue and screw uh, and nail actually that thing's really secured tightly I nail it I nail it through here into the end cleat uh, glue underneath the whole thing and then I screw it underneath through the plywood to pull it tight down onto there I'd like to clamp it but I can't clamp it I'm, you know I'm building 200 covers I don't have that many clamps I probably don't have enough clamps for maybe two or three covers uh, so that's what that's what I'm doing here and uh, it's just it's just 400 times through the dado blade <laughs> here I've got my sacrificial fence uh, covering over the edge of the dado blade I think I'm about seven eighths wide and uh, so there's three quarters of an inch protruding from uh, from the fence and that's what I end up with 400 pieces so with those pieces uh, I think I'm I'm nearly ready to start assembling covers just finished running the rabbits on these uh, 400 uh, end cleats here those are the top cleats so you know that's a lot of rabbits I got more rabbits than I can shake a stick at here I'm tired <laughs> that's a lot of cutting I had to empty the dust collector twice oh well hopefully we'll be on to assembling these soon this is my uh, my shims for under the top of the cover there and then the plywood is behind me so that's the next big job <laughs> <laughs>